I like to have complex, uh, but also minimal samples for people to be able to just clone it and just start from there without anything in the way. They can just understand the five lines of code and get started right away. Remember that VLC player that could play anything, all video? Oh, that was so marvelous. There's an API apparently that comes with it and we can do tons of stuff. And today in Open at Microsoft, I have Martin with me and we'll talk about that, very happy. So Martin, is it true? Can we play everything with VLC? Hi, Frank. Yes. It's true. <laughs> oh, wonderful. So happy to have you on the show. But today we're not talking about the player. We're talking about an API, am I right? Yes, that's correct. We're talking about the LibVSC API SDK. Okay, and uh, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Sure. So as most people know, the VLC uh, app is a multimedia player downloaded over 3 billion times. Uh, but what Many people don't know is that there is a libvlc SDK, uh, which allows you to embed your libvlc engine inside uh, inside the application, inside your application. Okay. So this allows you to have your own multimedia player and configure your UI the way you want, and you can use the same features that VLC uh, provides. Okay, can you give us an example of like how this could be used in like a, I don't know, like a, in, a, in an app? Sure. So, for example, um, one one use case that's that's often coming back uh, is a 360 video, right? So, okay. if you have a video that was recorded with a 360 camera, you could play playback using libvlc inside your application and you could navigate the whole stream in a strict like all the viewpoints um using code you, you could navigate that okay w would that api could be used also in video game i don't know like i'm walking and like in a, in a game and there's like a video playing on the tv or something like that yeah. in the game that definitely could... okay so, that's, like, that's yeah. cool so one, one of the projects I'm maintaining is uh, Unity 3D um, integration to VLC. So you can actually build Unity 3D games using C Sharp um, and VLC inside your Unity apps and games. So if you have, for example, uh, a three, uh, like basically this, <laughs> if you have a, a VR, a headset, you you could uh, definitely play like 360, 4K, 8K video, and uh, just yeah, look around it. Oh, that's crazy, and uh, I, like I know you have a demo because we we, we talked before recording. So oh. maybe you want to show us a little bit like how to get started with that. Like where do I get like the the lib the library oh. and like what the look the code looks like. Let me show you. Um, I'll get up first. Yeah, sure. Let's bring your screen up. So we're mostly using uh, GitLab, but uh, the the GitHub, uh, the the C Sharp uh, repository is also on on GitHub, and we're taking pull requests there. So we have a bunch of projects. Uh, VLC is the main one, and it contains the libvlc uh, SDK I mentioned earlier. There is the iOS app, Android app, and then. Objective C binding for Apple platforms, and there is libvlc Sharp, which is what we are interested in uh, today. Um, so that's the .NET binding for the libvlc SDK. So it's a SDK, but as a .NET developer, you don't necessarily want to to write C, um, but you want to write C Sharp or F Sharp or any other .NET language. So we're using this. Um, you can add a couple of NuGet packages, namely two. One is the libvlc engine built for your own platform. Uh, so Windows, let me show you that. So this is basically the engine built for Windows. This is C code. And this is the .NET uh, binding that is managed code. It is, this is what you call into when, when you're building an app using libvlc. Okay. 
and it's and, and like the 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 lib vlc sharp will call into the, the windows VLC. one Right, exactly. So libvl C Sharp is basically a, a piece of C Sharp code that handles the interaction with native code on all platforms. Because that's one of the nice parts of of libvlc is and so .NET as well. Um, it works everywhere. So you know how .NET is very portable. Yes, um, libvlc and is. I love that. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's really nice. But libvlc is also very portable, which is nice because then when you combine both of them together, you can have uh, an application that works everywhere with one code base and a multitude of uh, graphical uh, user interface uh, framework integrations. It runs everywhere and it plays everything. That's, that's perfect. Pretty much. <laughs> Every, everyone needs that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah, essentially, you would install the libvlc engine. As I said, it's a, it's a VLC engine uh, written in C. We already built it for you. We packaged it for you. It's on Nugget. So you just install that for your platform. And okay. then you install the managed.NET binding, uh, which is libvlc sharp. OK. Um, you say install, but like it's just like adding those package in my solution. Yeah, .NET add package, pretty much. Yeah. Okay. And then um, I think I have a bit of code here, but I can um, can I show you some code on the yeah sure on this? yeah yeah that would be, that would be easier. So I got uh, a, sam a samples repository that I will share uh, the URL with you later, so mm -hmm. anybody uh, can access it. It's all open source, obviously, and uh, so this is a very minimal WPF sample, so that okay. runs on. On Windows, and as you can see, um, oh, sorry, okay. As you can see, uh, the lines to get started are pretty much all contained in this file. So, 30 lines with a bunch of empty lines that's cool. So, about 50 lines, and we have everything. Pretty much. So yeah, this is wow. uh, actually this actually became optional, but this allows you to to load the the core uh, native library. Uh, this mm -hmm. is now done implicitly, but we still keep that option in case you want to load an engine from a different place. So EVLC is the main uh, object that you need. You just create that, then you create a media player from that. You assign it to a video view. Okay. And then you create a new media, which is, which it's an attraction for something you want to play. It could be a local file. It could be a, a HTTP uh, URL as here. It could be a DVD. It could be any protocol uh, that that we understand uh, with libvlc, so FTP, uh, HLS. Uh, does does really, it play yeah. streams? Yes, sure. Oh, yeah. Live That's streams, cool. YouTube streams, anything is, is possible. So you just call play on that new media and libvlc will know to draw the video on the video view that you assign the media player from here. That's, that's kind of simple code. I was expecting more lines, more, I don't know, something yeah. more complex. So that's that's it, cool. It, it, yeah, so libvlc takes a lot of complexity um, for multimedia playback, for cross-platform multimedia playback out of the way for you. And libvlc sharp goes even a bit further because um, it, it hides even more of that complexity, and but, that, but it keeps the cross-platform uh, capabilities. So it's this code that you see here works on Android iOS, Windows, Mac, Linux, everywhere. Oh, that's crazy. It's true. Yeah, it's portable. So like it's one piece of code that runs yep. everywhere. It, it is really just like .NET that you know runs everywhere. Oh, that's yep. cool. I love it. Oh, I see you're so sure. Oh, that's your you're running it right now. So that's your yeah. player. Yeah, I just I just click play and uh, it's just playing the video on on a control. Uh, like I said, that's all it's doing. That's I like to have complex, uh, but also minimal samples for 
people to be able to just clone it and just start from there without anything in the way. They can just understand the five lines of code and get started right away. I love it. It's, it's always a good idea. And like if people are wondering you know, what is maybe choppy on uh, on the stream right now, because we're asking a lot to your machine, like we're streaming right. playing a video and all those things. So that's that's why if you saw it a little bit choppy, okay. I'm sure it was it's supposed to be smooth. And when you will be running it, it will be smooth. Yeah. It was, it was here. <laughs> yeah, it was a little bit choppy on my side, but that's okay. normal. Magic of, you know, light of speed. Yep. I like that. Okay, so any anything else you want to show us uh, into the code? Otherwise, I, I guess we could go and uh, let share how people could get started, maybe join the community. You mentioned multiple time it was an open source project. Yep, it is. Um, so... There is a, a, a non-profit organization that uh, that uh, manages um, the projects, and mm -hmm. so VLC is one of the projects. But there is quite a few others. Um, mostly C. Uh, they are written in mostly C, except for this one, uh, which is mostly assembly code. Uh, it's a AV1 decoder. Um, written mostly by VideoLAN and FFmpeg communities. Other uh, mm, projects, Otherwise, so yeah. people can get those, start a new project, add those two package. You mentioned some demo also, so like it's on GitHub. Those uh, samples you had, right? So if you go to the GitHub uh, VideoLAN uh, slash slash C sharp, you will see all the links. Um, there is a link to the libvlc sharp sample repository, which contains a Chromecast sample, RTSP mosaic sample, uh, some nice uh, music player using Skia, some local network samples. You can clone everything and just press play and uh, start from there. Just, yeah. Understand how, how things are working. I love it. So we'll exactly. make sure to put like that link in the description down below, so can people can just click land on that right. page. Star that repo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fork it if they want to collaborate. Are you open sure. to a contribution? Of course. Yeah, yeah. Of course. So we have a Discord uh, channel with with all the LibVLC community from um, every ecosystem. So since LibVLC uh, runs everywhere, it's also used by many different languages. So we have people using uh, C Java, GoLang. Python and pretty much every language. So if you need help or if you want to contribute and you don't really know where to start, the the Discord uh, LibVLC Discord channel is a is a good start to um, to start asking questions. I love it. Well, I think it's it's a great time to wrap up this episode. Like. You know now you can join that con the super open community. There's the Discord, there's the GitHub repo. We'll make sure the links are in the description. Thank you, Martin, for coming Thank up you. today, sharing all that greatness with us. <laughs> Thank you, Frank. Thank you for having me. 